welcome. Today we have Mr. Alamudi here with us today. How are you doing? I am good, thank you. Can you tell us a bit about yourself? I am Muhammad Hussein Alamudi. My mother is Ethiopian and my father is Saudi Arabian. I'm the chairman and CEO of an international holding company called Midrock. Can you elaborate on that? Midrock involves many businesses. We also have over 70,000 worldwide employees. We strive to provide good service and bolster business interconnection between developing and developed nations, all the while protecting the environment. I invest in training and education all over the world as a service for business talent. There are opportunities to look for in every nation, but I am particularly involved in Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. In particular, I invest in construction, mining, agriculture, and petroleum. My assets include hotels, a Swedish and Moroccan oil refinery, Saudi gas stations, and coffee and rice agriculture, plus a gold mine in Ethiopia, just to name a few. Seems, your, seems like your career is very successful. Anything you're particularly proud of? My projects have gained me a net worth of over 12.6 billion US dollars. In 2015, Forbes magazine listed me as the second wealthiest Saudi Arabian and the second wealthiest African billionaire. Now, you're actually currently being detained in Saudi Arabia. You were arrested just last year for corruption and Forbes removed you from their list of wealthy people. Yes, that's correct. What's your point? Well, Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed al Salman seemed to place much blame on your head last year during his anti-corruption campaign. What do you have to say about that? Wow. I'm just going to say, don't believe everything you hear about me, okay? But in all seriousness, I was tracked down by the Ethiopian government's crackdown on corruption. I was detained at the same time as 15 other princes, ministers, and businessmen, though the purge took about 1,000 people in total. I was accused of money laundering and illegal, illegal land grabbing. These accusations, of course, are obvious. Wow, but the good news for you is the prospect of your release has made news in these past weeks. Is that right? Yes, the Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has placed priority on requesting to release me, which I am thankful for. I believe he said that the incarceration of one Ethiopian is the incarceration of all Ethiopians. As you recall, I am half Ethiopian. Many people are being released in exchange for their assets, though I'm not sure if I want to give up any of mine. Moving on from the shady aspects of your business, how has your business impacted global economics? As I touched on earlier, my company is involved in all different aspects of world business, whether it be production of raw materials or luxury goods. Due to my diversity among different commercial products, I have been able to build up a large influence in global economics, and many countries are dependent on my company and its products to keep them running. Thanks for sharing. Now let's talk oil. What is your work in the business and how has similar work done by others impacted global economy? Oil is an extremely important product that fuels the industrial world. Therefore, those who control oil have a lot of power over the economy. Personally, Midrock owns around 1,000 petrol stations. The Midrock company, Coral Petroleum, supplies one-third of oil to use in the Nordic region. Coral also leads the Moroccan fuel market. I personally own and oversee the Svenska Petroleum Exploration, which explores locations of oil and production. So you can say I am quite involved in respect to oil. Yes. Currently, Svenska is looking into West Africa and the opportunities there. Continuing on that topic, how does the organization OPEC impact worldwide economics? OPEC is a strong organization. They collaborate on their policies and prices, which can help them gain profit and makes other nations more dependent on them. It has many members that are major oil producers from Africa, the Middle East, and South America. From your perspective, what defines an important player in the global economy? Of course, developed and developing nations come to mind. Also, those who control or influence major products like oil, lumber, rubber, and metals hold power over others. For example, Qatar has 12% of the world's oil and combines this with smart strategy and connections. Ever since the 90s, they have been forging connections to export to other nations and collaborate with oil companies. Finally, how have economics changed relatively recently, specifically after the Cold War? After the rise of the internet, worldwide stock trade has advanced. From home, people can watch the rise and falls of companies and market indexes as wholes. In this way, the economic landscape is much more understandable to a greater quantity of people. Trading stock happens at the click of a button and is accessible to more groups. Predictions become a bigger, more technological act. Well, that's all, folks. Thanks for coming in today, Mr. Alamudi. Thank you for having me.